Hello, welcome to this lesson of the Linear Algebra Tutor. Here we're gonna talk about something called the rank of a matrix. A uh, matrix rank is something that you're gonna run into in your Linear Algebra course. It's a definition, it's something that you need to know how to find. Um, it's a characteristic of the matrix. Any matrix that you have is going to have a rank associated with it. And the reason I'm introducing it now is because when we get into some other topics, down the road, we're probably gonna be talking about matrix rank when we get into those other topics. So I wanna have a dedicated standalone section to tell you what it's about now, so that when we get into the future topics and I say, hey, the rank of this matrix is two or three, you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, so let me write a definition. I could just tell you this, but it's only one definition. I wanna write it on the board. Um, matrix rank uh, is the number of non-zero and this is probably not a definition you'll see in your book exactly like this. I'm kind of boiling it down for you. It's the number of non-zero rows in the row echelon form of the matrix. All right, that's it, not very long. And that doesn't make a lot of sense because I, I need to show you what the heck I'm talking about. First of all, the row echelon form. If you remember back to volume one of of linear algebra, we talked about uh, all the row operations that you can do on a matrix, and you can simplify a matrix and make it look different, but it represents the same thing. Those are called the row operations. And when you're solving a system of equations, you, you try to get it down into row echelon form, and what that means is you basically want to get it the ones along the diagonal and zeros underneath. And then that's sufficient to actually solve the system of equations, but if you go a step further, you get it into reduced row echelon form, where you get ones along the diagonal and also zeros on top and on the bottom of the diagonal. So basically, we don't need to go that far to find the rank of the matrix. We just need to get to the regular old row echelon form, which basically means that we want diagonals to have ones. We want zeros underneath. We don't care what's on top. We don't care about that, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, so what rank is actually telling you is it's telling you how many independent rows you actually have in the matrix. Don't forget that one way to think about matrices is you can always think of them as ways to represent a system of equations, right? And you all know that if you're trying to solve, think back to algebra, a long time ago you learned how to solve a system of equations before you knew about matrices, all right? And you learned that you could do substitution, you can add these equations together and so on. But what you're trying to do when you try to find a solution to a set of equations, you're just trying to find out where they intersect, especially if they're lines. So if you have like a line here and a line here, the intersection point, that's what you're really hunting for. So by sub 